Hello, hello everyone. Great to have you all here. I'm Cindy Drozda and this is our uh, approximately monthly Tool Talk live stream. And I just love it that so many of my friends show up to hang out. And uh, if, if I don't actually get to your name, um, it's only because there are so many here. Uh, greetings to Lars, your first time here. And Ian, always great to see you from across the pond there. David from my local area. And Rick, I, I don't know if I'm going to get to showing that camera today, but thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Very good. Um, another David here. Good friend from Oregon. Nice to see you. Yeah, well, you know, this is, this is a wonderful thing that our wood turning community does is get together and share stuff. And Paul from across the pond, uh, Keith from Texas. There's a lot of people out there in Texas and it looks like the sun is shining in a whole lot of the world today, even, uh, over there in, uh, across the pond in cloudy England, not today. Hey, Barbara, good to see you here. Yeah, you had a good time up there in New York at that Totally Turning show. Um, yeah, so so I'm here to share some stuff with you. And before I get going on all of that, I would like to do a little rundown on uh, just some stuff that's happening in uh, the wood turning world for me here. Here is my place. Let's get rid of, if I can, uh, this. Okay. This is my shop today and spring is here. I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but all the, all the bushes are leafing out and the irises are coming up and it's a great time to be in Colorado for sure. I, I love it here this time of year. Um, no, I didn't want to do that. We got mouse control problems, do we? Okay. Uh, Let's see about what's next. I do these, what I call Tool Talk Live, Wood Turning Tool Talk Live sessions about once a month. I'm online every other Friday, more or less. Um, and every other one of those is a session like this one. So my next one will be April 26th. That's two weeks from today. And it's approximately that way. Um, and my friend Todd Rains, Wood Turning Tool Store, he also does a similar uh, session. And here's a little contact for him. Uh, his sessions are every other Friday on the uh, Fridays when I'm not doing it. So you can see one of us every week. And sometimes you actually see both of us together. Um, his will be this coming Friday, his next one. And you can find him on uh, woodturningtoolstore.com there. Um, and his are, his sessions are two thirty central. Mine are, um, 2 PM Eastern, which is 1 PM central. So we just have our own thing going here. Uh, and, uh, once a month, you can see both of us together. We do a zoom sharing session, which is loads of fun. And, um, for us, this is a, a great time to put ideas out there, get and give feedback and ideas, and, and we can answer questions that all of us have. And uh, since it's Zoom, there are open mics and cameras if you want to, and uh, bring a piece of, uh, of your work to share. All kinds of great stuff that happens at these sessions, so definitely don't miss it. Oh, and I see we have uh, a lot of friends here um, from all over the place. Michael, a good friend from, I think you're up in Canada someplace. And, uh, oh, and Chuck is from my local area here. Uh, Jennifer, good to have you here. And if, if you want to post in the comments, just... Uh, Something about where you're from and what it's like out there today. I see Ian's about ready to have to mow the grass. Uh, I don't know. It'll be a while for me, but uh, it grows faster in some parts of the world. Uh, anyway, yes, and happy Friday to everyone. Um, I am 
uh, I am here. Uh, I do online wood turning demonstrations, classes, instructional sessions uh, about once a month. And the last one I did, I called it a spaceship vessel. It's this shape of hollow vessel. And here is one of these. We'll go here. So I can show you, oh, we don't have it zoomed out quite enough, do we? Let's uh, get that done. Okay, so this is the Spaceship Hollow Vessel. This is the shape. It's a, a kind of a disc-shaped hollow form. And I did this really cool coloring method that's, of course, glare like crazy off of these lights because I'm also putting a high-gloss finish on it. Uh, this is the demo piece that's going out to one of the attendees. Um, I always raffle off the piece that I make in the session. So I'm, what I'm going to do uh, in the next session is put a finial and pedestal on. It won't be that one, but uh, a form just like that. So I'll be doing spindle work and I'll be having a... Uh, uh, little tutorial on how I do my finials and and bases as well as how I come up with the proportions and the shapes and all of that because that's mm, spindle turning itself is relatively easy it's figuring out what you're going to do and all the proportions that's that's more diff difficult sometimes all right so uh Turning aliens to go inside it. Well, hmm, maybe, maybe. Yes, indeed. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ian has already mowed his lawn three times. Wow. Um, so, okay. So uh, here is a question. I have to apologize. I am still working on the spaceship video. Uh, vendor showcase last weekend and this session here and all kinds of other things. It's coming. You should get it today or tomorrow. And yes, I always provide a video for six months after these sessions, but it's only me doing everything. So I'm editing it and uploading it and all that stuff. And sometimes it takes longer. This one needed a little bit more work than usual, this video. Uh, so anyway, on May 4th, I will be doing the uh, finial and pedestal. And you can, you can find me. Um, let's see. If you subscribe to my list, and there's a QR code for you, um, you will get notifications of all the things I'm doing, including the link for these sessions and the Zoom sharing sessions. So uh, yeah, uh, Tony is, is keen on the coloring, and that to me is really fun. Especially this one's a little more complicated, a little more involved than I usually do. I'm usually doing a real simple coloring method in uh, my tutorials, but this one is um, pretty cool. Anyway, and it's easy, low tech. Uh, hey, here is a friend from Vendor Showcase, Joe Fleming. We'll talk about the uh, Vendor Showcase here in a minute. And I got to get all these comments off of here. Uh, so you can subscribe to my list by clicking the QR code or just go to my website and you can find it. Um, uh, yes, may the 4th be with you. Indeed, Star Wars Day. So what am I going to do for Star Wars Day? Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll wear a Chewbacca costume or an R2-D2 costume or something like that. We shall see uh, if I can get it together. Uh, all right. So, so another thing that's coming up here in wood turning is uh, my friend and fellow Vendor Showcase member, Lyle Jameson, is doing... A, a burl session this coming Tuesday. Or is it this Tuesday? No, it's not this Tuesday. It's a week from Tuesday. Uh, and that'll be really fun. Lyle does a great presentation and uh, he's got lots of knowledge to share. He just did one a few days ago on uh, advanced hollowing and problem solving. Man, that was cool. That was a lot of sharing and stuff there. Uh, and this past Saturday, we 
did Vendor Showcase. So Vendor Showcase is me and Todd Rains and Joe Fleming. Uh, the three of us uh, are also, well, the three of us are around here today. Um, uh, we are also joined by uh, Lyle Jameson who's doing the demo in a week and a half and Steve Worcester of turningwood.com and uh, Vicki Jordan for John Jordan Wood Turning. And we, we got together and we had a really fun time. And what we like to do is collaborate on uh, a piece or two and then auction them to benefit our favorite charity of the, of the day. Um, so I'll, I want to show you a little bit about what went on there. Uh, we had uh, Todd made the plate, the base plate. Lyle made the beehive and Steve made the bee. And here are a few more pictures of it. The hive comes off and the bee can either go down in, on inside the hive or up on top like that. Uh, the plate is pyrography and dye. The uh, hive is uh, basically a holoform turning and Lyle showed us how to use his system um steve made this totally awesome bee now get an idea of the scale this hive is about three inches in diameter inside 75 millimeters so that tells you a little bit about how small this bee is well uh what did i do i also made a bee and um here is the bee that i made. This isn't the one. This is an example. I made a few of them. Uh, so this is a stylized bee. It's nowhere near as realistic as Steve's. Um, I, I uh, turned the body in the vendor showcase session and I, I described how I did the wings. They're a, a German ring turning and then slices cut out of it. Uh, the antennae are some little jewelry head pins, and we can put our B out here, here somewhere, uh, where I can show it. I'm not sure where we can go. Oh, uh, right. Anyway, I put the B on a little piece of burl here, and it it's got. It's got some movement to it, so he's flying around. Yeah. Oh, and of course, uh, John is the one who has a comment to make about everything. Uh, I appreciate your humor, John. He's our our class comedian there. Oh, and of course, Chuck, not to be left out. Um, going out to dinner. May the forks be with you. Yes, on May four. May the fork. May the fourth. Yes. Um, okay. So here. Here is my bee, and um, it is not glued together. So here's what we have. I did this in the vendor showcase session, but I didn't. I didn't spend the time to completely sand it. And you can see, kind of see if we zoom in a bit here, maybe. That our little bee is not very well sanded. Let's see if we can focus on him perhaps a bit better. There we are. Uh, the bee consists of antennae in little tiny holes. There's also a tiny hole for that support stick. The wings are a uh, little tenon into a hole. And the body is a spindle turning. So I turned this spindle during the session here, or last Saturday. And um, let's see, Chuck is suggesting type O wire. Um, I don't know what kind of wire it is. It's something I had lying around in a box of, uh, I think it's brazing wire. It's brass. It's non-ferrous metal. I believe it's brazing wire, but it's it's harder than brass wire. So it kind of gives you a little of that resilience with the bee flying. Anyway, so so I didn't sand this very well. What I'd like to do today is mount this piece in a jam chuck so that I can sand and color it. Uh, the 
what we actually did during vendor showcase was we had uh we had two collaborations the one i showed you and then one that is not completed yet with my b and lyle did a hive same hive as in the the other sculpture and uh joe made a plate and he will he will be painting it airbrushing probably or i don't know how he's going to do it uh anyway so so this is another b and I had, I did a few, you know, as I was practicing and stuff. So now I've got a couple extra bees and this one I'm going to uh, finish up here for you today. Oh, and here's something else. Um, I, I want to mention that um, we're going to do a giveaway. So here's what it is. You can win the bee I'm working on today with the little, the little burl base not the hive and everything like that because i that i don't have um so what you got to do to enter the drawing is type hashtag vendor showcase in the comments no spaces but capitalize both words so i will be keeping an eye on y'all to see who gets it right uh, this is a little bit of a challenge for you there you go david perfect todd Try again. You got it. Wait a minute. Here it is. You got to put both words with no space. Okay. And, uh, oh, I got to get rid of that. It's like this. And not like that. I want to get rid of that one. And these comments just got go flinging off everywhere. Oh, I know where it is. Right. Tech is on, on my tail all the time. All right. Uh, so, yeah, type the hashtag vendor showcase in the comments. No other words in your comment. Like, don't put your name or anything. And it's got to be uppercase, lowercase, uppercase first letters of both words and lowercase the rest of it. Um, and I will bring that back again that um banner after a while but i'm not going to keep it going across the bottom of the frame the whole time like i used to do uh, apparently that's a little bit much to have to watch all right especially while i'm doing something okay so my b here um the dilemma is how do i grip this already parted off spindle turning we'll keep our little parts over here for now so how do I grip this is the question. Uh, what I'm going to show you is something that's actually pretty cool. I'm going to make a jam chuck and a little bit different type of jam chuck because this is one that can be uh, adjusted, tightened like a collet. So it's I call it a, a collet jam chuck. Uh, I've got my chuck on here. and. I'm going to move over a little more here. This is an Axminster chuck with O'Donnell jaws. Any jaws will work, but I like these jaws for stuff like this because uh, you can see in there, it's got a center spigot tightening area. So I'm, I'm going to get my prepared blank here which is a cylinder with a little shoulder that's going to go in the chuck and here's the key to it i've got a piece of oh well, i i put it on the bandsaw and i cut a slot in here and then i put a little piece of plastic laminate in the slot so that now i will tighten up my chuck and i'll put that little little slot and laminate right in a in the core in the gap between the jaws i don't know if that's important or not but and just then we'll tighten it down. And so what I've done is tighten my chuck 
around this this mm, cylinder and that closes the the gap of the slot but it can't close all the way it's held in place by that slip of piece plastic laminate and when i say plastic laminate it's called different things on different parts of the world i'm sure this is um a Formica brand, and what you can do is, or you used to be able to do this, go to the home store where you want to buy, uh, pretend like you're going to buy laminate for your countertops, and, and they'll give you these little chips here uh, of laminate, so you can take them home and see how you like the color, and I used to be able to pick up old ones, out of stock ones and stuff, and so I've got a whole drawer full of these little laminate chips, and I cut a little piece off, and I put it in this slot that I cut on the bandsaw. Oh, um, yes, well, uh, John, the purple laminate chips get used up first. <laughs> I haven't gotten any in a while. Uh, so, um, yes, this is what I have, an SK-100 Chuck with the O'Donnell jaws. And, yeah, uh, all right, postage from the from uh, either the U.S. to Canada or the U.K. to Canada, it's not good. I don't know what to say. I wish... I wish we had a better agreement with our postal services worldwide. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, so so what I'm planning to do here is um, jam chuck the bee. And to jam chuck the bee, I will need uh, to grip on either the head or the tail. I'm going to do both. First, I grip on the head, sand and finish the tail. And then I'll grip on the tail, sand and finish the head. And I'll, I'll be doing some coloring. I hope the coloring works. I haven't really tried it. You know, usually I practice, but I didn't have a chance to practice here or any spare bees. Uh, okay, so do we have some people typing in vendor showcase not the right way? Uh, exactly right, Paul. You need hashtag vendor showcase, capital V, capital S, no spaces. I never like to make it too easy on you folks, right? Oh, that was the cost of the Chuck and the Jaws? 88 Canadian? Oh, for the package. Here, now, I thought I didn't read it properly. I thought you said for the postage. Wow, that is a deal. I don't know where you got that deal, Michael, but uh, I wish I could. I'd buy another Chuck for that much. That's great. Okay, so, so I've got my little... Uh, call it blank in the chuck. And what I'm going to do is uh, make a cavity that will fit the head of the bee. And we'll do the body first. So to do that, I every time I drill a hole now, I'm, I'm reminded of my friend Lyle Jameson, who gave me this really great tip on, uh, on Keeping the drill, I'm going to need to zoom out a little bit here. And we'll need to move um, back over so we can show the whole thing. I, I, you don't need to see the whole chuck anymore. All you need to really see is the business end. So, so I've got a drill in a Jacob's chuck. And you see there's a little hole in the tailstock ram. And that is going to line up with a hole in the Morse taper. This is a tip I got from Lyle Jameson. And I can't thank you enough, Lyle, for that tip. It's just fantastic. Then I take a pin and drop it through the two holes. Now, when I back the drill out of the hole, it doesn't tend to try to pull the Morse taper out of the socket. Wow, genius. All right, so before I uh, actually drill the hole, here's another uh, tip about drilling holes from Lyle. And that is to uh, start the drill so that it goes right on center. Not that I really care so much about whether this drills on center, but I want to show you this technique. I'm going to uh, take my spindle gouge and uh, make a, uh, what would you call that? Just a guide for the drill bit bigger than the diameter of the drill. So what this does, you know, usually what I would have done is I would have uh, 
made a little center mark for the center of the drill bit. But here what we have is that cone is bigger than the diameter of the drill, so it'll locate on the outside of it. And I'm just drilling a hole here. Drilling a hole all the way through. Oh. All the way through that collet piece. And now I don't have to hold on to the chuck when I pull the, the drill out of the hole because we've got that pin in there. I love it. All right. Uh, so that hole was not the right size. That hole is a little smaller than what I want. Uh, and now I'm going to open it up to the size for the head of the B. You see, that doesn't fit yet. So I'll get uh, I'll get my favorite recess cutting tool and open that up. I'm also going to get a mark on there by well caliper the head of the B. Get the diameter of the head of the B and lock the caliper. And scribe on the piece, touching the near point of the caliper to the wood, and making a mark that if I touched both points to the wood, it would line up. Both points would line up with the groove I just turned. And I'm using my recess cutter, which is this one here. Let's move over a little bit here. Move over here. Okay. This tool cuts on the side of the tool here, which is parallel to the other side of the tool. So I will be able to make easily make a parallel sided recess when I hold the tool parallel to the bed of the lathe. I'm also going to move the tool rest back enough that it supports on the full width of the steel so that the tool doesn't get rolling when the wood touches the cutting edge. And I want to cut approximately on center line, so I'll raise the, uh, raise the tool rest a little. Oh, now let's get caught up on the questions here. I see that um, Michael was 120 Canadian, 88 US. That is a hell of a deal for a chuck with jaws. I'm sure I paid double that for mine. So, yeah, I don't know where. Why don't you post in the comments, Michael, where you got it? Did you order it from Axminster UK or from the wood turning store in New York or? Uh, somewhere else. So lots of us might want that. Um, a question, how do I sharpen the tool I'm about to use? I sharpen the bottom bevel and uh, that puts a little burr on the top edge. And what I'm going to do is, is line it up parallel to the bed of the lathe and push in and make a recess, parallel recess. And because of this collet method here, see, it's, it's too big, right? But it's still going to probably work because uh, this is what's cool about this kind of collet jam chuck is I'm going to take the piece of laminate out of the saw cut and put it back in the chuck. We now, now, oh, that's as far as we go, eh? Okay, let's go a little further here. Okay. We now 
can tighten it up further than just the cylinder we had. It's not going to probably be the most perfect uh, spinning true, but we'll, we'll be able to tighten this up on the head of the B and it does actually take a bit of tightening, a bit of effort here to tighten it up. I'll stick my B in there for now. Tighten it a little more, a little more. Oh, it's not going to work, is it? Okay. It's not going to work because I made it too big trying to show off there, huh? Yeah, that was me. Okay, so... I'm going to need to use a, a different B. Does it have a bigger head? I think so. So here I was trying to show off how much you can tighten this up, and I actually just made the uh, hole too big. So now I might be completely in trouble. And uh, Cosman has a good idea. Okay, let's try this. Since really I'm not trying to do a lot of fine work here, what I'm trying to do is just hold this B for sanding. So. Yeah, I like that idea. I'll, I'll put some, some tape around the bee's head. And this will be a good tip for the other side of the bee also. Or, oh, yes, yeah, so uh, Michael's got another good suggestion. Widen the kerf, and that'll give me more crunching ability there. So... Okay, this is going to work great now because it's snug already and I haven't even started tightening it. Thank you, folks. See, this is why I love wood turning. We've got uh, lots of ideas running around out there. Uh, before I do that, I want to get this little... I want access to the whole thing for sanding, so I'm going to take that little bit off. And I think I need to go focus on the B. No, it didn't focus on the B. It focused on something else. Here. Focus, fo folks. Focus, folks. There we are. Okay. Get the chips out of the hole. Tighten it up. And I've got access to the entire B body. Ah, but now I, I need some... Uh, I need to... The B is not going to spin true, is it? Because I have no reference there. So I, I can do any number of things. Uh, I'm going to give myself a good start by taking a tail center that has a, a hole in it. And this is a, one of those, it's a finial chucky from rubber chucky, and it's got a little bearing in the end. That doesn't matter, really, because I'm not using it to... Uh, hold anything while the lathe is spinning. I'm just using it to kind of get close to the B being true in the hole. And how are we doing? That's a lot better. If I think it needs a little more, I could give a little... Do I think it needs a little more? No, that's, that's good. I think that's going to be great. We'll... Tighten it up one more crunch here. And I think that's going to be great. So uh, here's another uh, another good suggestion. And, and I did think of this one. Um, use this chuck for the body. Well, the reason I started with the head is because then I can use the same chuck for the body by making it bigger. Uh, I would like more bee sticking out of the hole here, so I'm going to do this over again. And while I'm uh, doing that, let's just make a suggestion that you can win this bee that I'm 
working on here. If you enter the drawing by typing hashtag vendor showcase in the comments with nothing else in the comment, no, not your name or anything, and capital V, capital S, no other capitals. So I'm just going to use this, this bearing to kind of center up the end of the bee's body and then tighten it up. And I'll be drawing for the bee uh, at the end of the hour. Okay, we'll just get this tail center. I'm not going to use the tail stock because what I want is I want uh, access to sanding the whole thing. So now I'm going to slow the lathe down to about 500 or so RPM. And you can see it's not spinning perfectly true. But the thing is, with it's uh, 350 RPM here. With the low RPM... The sandpaper doesn't bounce around and try to true up the shape. It stays right on my shape. So I've got the lathe spinning fairly slowly here. Can we get a little more speed and still manage it? If I turn the speed way up, well, it's not that great for sanding anyway, but now what it's going to try to do is hit the high points and not sand the whole shape. So I'm sanding with 400 here now. We're at about 700 RPM, 750. And I'd like to sand my things all the way from maybe starting with 400 or 240 all the way to uh, 4,000 because I think that gives me the better quality finish to have a smooth wood surface to start with. And I maybe could have started with 240 here because I didn't do the cleanest cutting job uh, during the Vendor Showcase show. I made this piece in my little segment during Vendor Showcase. Uh, by the way, Vendor Showcase is tons of fun. And we're going to do another one in October. So keep your eye out. Subscribe to my list right here. Here, right? Aren't we going to get anything going? Maybe we have to go back over here first. There we are. 400, 600, 1,000. And that should probably be good for what I'm doing here today. I want to get the end of the bee's tail stinger kind of area there uh, because the, the spinning lathe won't really get it at all right there on the end. I won't really get too much close to the end either. So this is good. This is good. Let's see if we have any comments here. Okay, so Gary has got it right. That's what you need to put in the comments so that you can hopefully win my B, assuming I get something finished here. And... Yes, as John said, bees are a little bit fuzzy. They are. And I'm not going to have a fuzzy bee, although that's that's giving me an idea. I could I could have a fuzzy bee uh, by by putting some glue on the surface and sprinkling mica powder. So, ooh, that would be fun. All right, but I wasn't prepared for that today. So what I'm going to do is make a striped bee bottom like you see about bees. Okay, so Roger, Roger, here's what you got to do. Take the space out and take your name out. Just like this. Vendor Showcase, no space, capital V, capital S. Right? And I put my QR code up here just so that if you want to get a notification of the next Vendor Showcase, uh, you can get on my mailing list there. Oh, um, good question. I mentioned briefly about where the bee had to fit inside, but the dimensions of the bee are, well, it's fitting inside that three-inch diameter beehive. And let me get, uh, 
back over to C. Here is a drawing of my B. And this is where I started. I started with just a really rough sketch. It's not even very symmetrical or anything. Uh, yeah, flocking, that would be good. Uh, so this is my drawing. The B is going to be uh, about two and a half inches total diameter because I want it to fit inside that three inch hive. And that's that's where I, I got all of that. Oh, oh, Joe, yes, Fuzzy B, yay. See, Joe is is decorating the B that I sent to him for the vendor showcase sculpture, uh, which has already been auctioned off. And a uh, little word on that, we are, um, we every time we do vendor showcase, we have an auction of our pieces that we make, collaborations or otherwise, and uh, choose a charity. This one is, is to benefit the John Jordan Endowed Scholarship at Aeromont School of Arts and Crafts. And uh, those sculptures are already sold and already the, the buyers have submitted their pledges. And a lot of us pledged at the same time, too. I sent an extra couple hundred dollars in. And if you want to um, donate to Aramont in John's name, uh, you have to designate that that's where you want the money to go. You can't just send them a donation and they know about that because they take donations for lots of stuff. All right. So what I'm going to do here now is if we can get back over here. Uh, I have, I'd kind of like to get closer and that's as close as we get. So let's, uh, let's closen it up a little bit and let's, um, do a little focus, focus, focus. It's in focus. I'm using these, these, uh, markers. This is a Copic marker. It's a die marker. One end is a pointy one and the other end is a chisel. And it's purple, as you can see. And bees are usually, well, there are purple bees, right? I found out. So I'm going to do uh, stripes on the bee's body. Oh, you know, I think I should do the yellow first. So I get my yellow one. And we're breaking new ground here. This is this is the Todd Rains method of live stream. Try something you never did before, right in front of everybody with the world watching. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm living dangerously. Inspired by Todd. Uh, I'm not going to turn the lathe on, but I am going to kind of get, let's see, I want to get right in there with yellow right next to, there's yellow. This B is made of madrone and it's got some color to it. And we'll do another yellow stripe. The tool rest is allowing me to hold the marker in place against the B without having it move around. Like if I just held it in the air without the tool rest, it might move around a lot. I'll get another one. I'm thinking light color first. I originally picked up the purple first, but I'm thinking light color first because if I want to cover up some yellow with some purple, that'll work a lot better than trying to color cover the purple with the yellow. Uh, suggestion here from Duncan, Sharpie pens would be great and they have fine ones and i think i've got one of those yeah and i could uh do some other details on the on the b with sharpie sharpies are a really nice rich black too uh and i think they may have colors but i happen to have these markers and this has a it has a small tip as well so if i wanted to do something like like uh uh I'm not liking the way that came out. So we're going to do a little stinger right here. And then we're going to do a little 
more yellow here. More yellow here. Right up to the purple. Okay, good. Purple looks like it needs a bit of a bit of adjustment. Oh, I need to get closer also. Needs a bit of adjustment right here to crisp up the line. And I got to, the bee is going to have a spotted tail because I hit when I didn't mean to. Now, do I want the full width? No. So we're going to go with two widths of purple here. Purple and yellow, by the way, are complementary colors on the color wheel. So I am perfectly within artistic uh, rules on making this choice of purple and yellow. Uh, oh, and Joe says the Sharpie colors fade badly. I'm surprised to hear that. Uh, actually, uh, I think Todd said that yellow of any kind fades badly. So whoever gets this bee, keep it out of the sun. Uh, and the ultra fine tips of anything get wiped out on wood really quickly. David Nitman used to use do those basket illusion things, and and he used to uh, uh, complain about how the fine tip would wear out first. And here's what David used this he used this um, this uh, Tria Pantone Tria marker, and it's got a uh, that size and a I can get it out of there. A real tiny one, and those apparently wear out fast on wood. So if I want black, I got that one, and I've also got a sharpie black. Right now, I want I want more purple stripes here, and we're gonna make a really wide purple stripe here. Maybe I could make it full purple width. How's that going to go? Over touch. So this is actually working pretty well here. And there are a lot of, of pens like this that would work. And um, mixing the two colors is not good, Joe, is right about that. Every complementary set of colors includes red, yellow, and blue, which makes poop brown, like Joe so uh, aptly put it. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to mix complementary colors. I want to use them next to each other so they complement. Uh, and purple and green actually look really good together, too. Uh, the B being off a little bit is... Uh, maybe messing with my stripe width, but also, you know, I'm not trying to be all that precise here. Uh, Faber-Castell markers are very nice, and they come in some really, really fine tips like point.
Okay, we have audio again, at least for now. Thanks for letting me know, and do please let me know if that happens again. It appears as though I've got... Since I've been dealing with computer problems, I didn't have that charging thing plugged in. So I'm on now, right? Audio good? Somebody please tell me in the chat there. Audio good? Audio good? No audio? Still no audio? We should have audio. I'm going to check it. Okay. Yes, I have audio. I do have audio. Okay, then. So hopefully we're good. Yeah, we are good. So, all right. Thanks for letting me know there. Sorry about that. I think it was a dead battery problem. All right, so what I want to do now is put some finish on the B bottom while I have it here, and it's easy. And I, I could, uh, one of the things I like to do for a finish for something like this is I like to use a, a spray. Um, let's see what we have here. But today I think what I'm going to do is use CA glue and see if this will work. Now, it might smear the color, so I'm going to be cautious to start with. And where is that Parfix? You've got this Parfix 3408, which is a CA that's made for finishing wood. And my suspicion is that it might very well smear the color. So let's give just a short little test. So you see a little color on there? That means it's trying to smear the colors. And what I need to do is make sure I don't move my little paper side to side. Okay. We've got a blob here. So this is all I'm going to do. I'm not going to uh, hold the paper on and try to, try to dry it with friction because I'm afraid that what that will do is cause uh, worse smearing of the colors. Oh, we need to get some more of that color out of there. There's a little too much CA right here. Oh, there's a little too much CA right here. So this is good. Usually what you do now is you turn the lathe on and you hold the paper up to it and let the friction cure the CA. And I might do that. I might have a little spritz to help it cure. Oh, that ruined it, didn't it? Ah! I ruined it. Oh, no. I ruined it. See if we can get a little salvation here. I didn't want to turn it on. More yellow. We're getting some more yellow. Well, our B is just going to be, I learned a thing or two here. Our B is just going to be uh, not as brilliantly yellow as we might have thought. All right, well, that's fine. Um, and now I want to do another jam chuck for the, uh, the body of the B. Oh, <laughs> yeah, good point. Do I have CA on my marker tips now? Well, I thought the CA was cured, but maybe not. So we're going to do the... We're going to do the head of the bee now, and that means I want this off. So this is what I get for trying something that I've never done before in front of a crowd, right? That's not, oh, that's the one. Okay, so I, I pre-made a um, another one of these collets for the back end of the bee, which we will put in here now. 
with our little piece of laminate removed. I liked having a little shoulder on my collet piece just, just because it, it allows me to push it in and hold it. And the first one I did, I pushed it all the way in there and it, it went in and I couldn't get it back out again easily. So here's our B. You know, I like the idea of the, of the masking tape, even if I don't actually need it because I think it'll help keep the finish from getting uh, messed up. So we're just gonna put a single layer on. And you get a little bit of forgiveness with the with the tightening with this collet method. Uh, now I want, I want to get it to spin relatively true. And it kind of is, but I can give it a little tap to get it closer. And then tighten it all the way. Any suggestions on what I should do for the head of the bee? Anybody got aesthetic choices to be made here? I'm going to do some sanding because this one didn't get very well sanded in the uh, vendor showcase. Starting with 400 and then I'll go, uh, I think I'm sanding today to 1,000. I often will sand my pieces to 4,000 just to be sure there are no sanding scratches or tear out or missed places or anything. And the finer you sand, the clearer you see the wood through the finish. And I think it makes a difference. Plus, if I'm using an oil finish, the fine sanding tends to not need as many coats. So in the on the end, on the end, I'm just sanding across to get the very center because right in the middle, the wood is not moving at all. So it's not going to sand very well right in the middle. We'll do a little bit of. 500 and then a th or 600 and then a thousand and we'll do some more color and seeing as this is my B it doesn't have to be all that uh, realistic so for the head I'm gonna make it green I know that's not a real B color green but this is me we're going to have green, and I'll get the chisel tip again. No, I don't think so. I'm going to get the fine tip, and I don't want to turn that on, do I? And we'll just get right in there into the wing area, right there, and then... The rest of it. I wonder what would happen if I did turn the lathe on. Very, very low. Well, that works all right. That works fine. Yeah, I could have done those stripes that way too. In fact, if I wanted to put some stripes on his head, I could do that. We're going to do black, though. Black, and this is that, this is that Pantone Tria marker. Yeah, let's do some tiny stripes on his head. One right here. That's not working. How about, there's one. 
And now we got to do some kind of face on the B. Uh, I'm not going to do that CA. I think what I, because it's smeared too badly, I think what I want to do is take a, uh, and maybe this would be under the CA, but a, a can of spray clear. I probably have a picture of this somewhere. This is what I'm using, Krylon Spray Clear. So I, when I do a spray on the lathe type finish like this, what I'll do is turn the lathe on going about as slow as it'll go. And then do a little spray coat and let it keep going a while so until the lacquer dries. So now is a pretty good time to finish the wings. And here we have wings. I want to do something a little different on the wings. I want them to be blue. It's a kind of an aqua blue. Let's get this here and go, uh, can I go here? Okay. Little wings. The wings were done as a German ring turning, which means I made the profile in a ring and then sliced the ring on radial lines to get cross sections of the ring. Here is the ring, and you can see the cross sections. And you probably think, oh, you're going to get hundreds of wings out of this piece, but not really, because when the grain is running this way through the little wing pieces, they're strong. When you get over here and the grain is running across, then these tenons break off way too easily. Oh, and um, Duncan is getting a little bit technical here. <laughs> bees have two sections to the body. Okay, well, my next one's not going to be a bee anyway. It's going to be a spider. So we'll see about... I'll, I'll do a little more anatomical research for the spider. My bee thing was... The bee, I just wanted it to be kind of stylized. So I, I've got this aqua blue dye and I don't want a real dark color here I want kind of a kind of a blue and it looks like this is a real light aqua blue it's a color that I bought pre-mixed from the manufacturer it's trans tint dye and they have pre-mixed colors you can also mix them I'm, I'm not looking for a lot of color to the wings. I'm looking for just a little bit. After the dye has dried for a minute or two, I will lay them down on a piece of cardboard or something and get uh, that spray and, and spray the wings. So that's what I'll do for the wings here. Do we still not have audio? I should have audio. All right, wings are done. Body is done. The only thing my bee needs is a face and all the rest of his parts. And then we can do a raffle to find a winner for my little bee. Is that dry? Yeah, the lacquer's dry. Okay. Unwrap this. Now I might actually want to do some work on here where the lacquer kind of got on the body of the bee. And I'm not sure 
what I want to do, maybe put the body back in and uh, spray again. And Sally is asking me why I didn't cover the ways of the lathe when I sprayed. I was lazy. Sorry. I also didn't spray at the ways. I sprayed out toward my lights and things instead. <laughs> but yes, that would be a better thing to do is to cover the ways and the chuck with something when you spray. Uh, all right. What I was going to do here now is a face. And I'm, I'm probably the world's worst at that sort of artist stuff, making a face on something. So let's hope I don't ruin it. There are his, we'll zoom in a bit more. There are his antenna holes right there. And we might want to focus here. Okay. And get back over here. So I'm going to do a couple of eyes. And a nice mouth with a crazy smile. This is sort of inspired by um, Holly Denny. She used to make these snowmen years ago. And she always put these crinkly smiles on them. And I thought that was pretty cool looking. So there we have a bee with a crooked smile. And I'll put him back together again here. A lot of little parts. And then we'll give him away. Wings. All right, we may have another minute or two of audio if I'm lucky. If I'm lucky. There we are. If I had more time to spend on it, I'd get even more uh, rescue audio. So how are we here? Nope, they go the other way. Lengthwise, I mean. Okay, there's a nice little bee, and I'll put him, her, on a stick. There we have a nice bee. It's not a very good background to put him against. With a, a rather silly expression on his face or her face. on a piece of burl and sorry dave yes you you were right about the audio i had no audio let me get the drawing done while i hopefully maybe still have audio over here over here over here over here there we are there's the bee and that was a lot of fun okay cute little bee huh Joe will probably do a way better job of bees. So we're going to do a drawing for this bee. If you've entered, you will have put in just like Thomas just did. Vendor showcase. Hashtag vendor showcase. Because this bee was what I did is my part of the vendor showcase collaboration this past week. And... Uh, yeah, here we have, have a little backdrop for you. 
Now you can see the bee kind of a little better. Uh, so hashtag vendor showcase with no space and a capital V, capital S. All right. Very good. So get your entries in. I'll give you another minute or so. And Dave, I don't know why you don't have audio. I think I do send audio. Seems like other people are hearing me. I, I have no idea what's going on, but I can help you troubleshoot that later. So yeah, who knows? It might be your speaker. It might be, oh, I don't know. Uh, okay, we've got 83 entries so far. And Sally hears me. Thank you very much. So when I click the draw button, we're going to get a winner for this B. And if I don't know you, you're going to have to send me your your email address or your address actually to ship it to you. Okay, so are we ready? Get your entries in. We'll give you another minute, another second, another half a second. As soon as the entries start slowing down, I'll just go do the draw thing. Saludos to Mexico. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, I haven't seen an entry for Vendor Showcase in a second or two. So here we go. I'm going to click. Somebody's going to be a winner. Very good. Very good. And who is going to be our winner today? Yay, Gary Egbert. Congratulations, Gary. Congratulations. Send me your address and I'll send you a B. I don't know if Gary's still on because uh, people have been putting their entry in for the last hour. And so it's possible that Gary is not on the stream anymore, in which case I hope I can find his email to find his address. And there's no, um, no point to entering the raffle anymore because... It's already done. And Gary Egbert was our winner. Um, Joe's got a question about collet jam chucks. This is a good one. Is there an ideal side of the collet jam chuck to cut the bandsaw slot based on grain orientation? Oh, you're probably right, but uh, I didn't pay any attention. Um, what I would say is, and I didn't mention this, I just instinctively did it, is that the call it let's get over here needs to have the grain running parallel to the bed of the lathe if the grain went the other way then you would definitely need to be aware of grain direction it also might be weaker i have no idea but i always do it this way and i oftentimes I try to make the slot go almost to the other edge so there's even more flexibility. But this was flexible enough. I mean, I had, I tried to illustrate the point by making it way too big and crunching down on it, and it didn't completely crunch all that well, but a little bit of masking tape uh, fixed it right up. And we have a cute little bee here. I'm so happy with this. This is great. And, uh, I hope to see all of you at the next vendor showcase. Is it driving you nuts that this thing is jiggling around? It's a busy bee. He sure is. Okay, folks. Well, uh, that's it for me today. Uh, here's, a, here's a question for, um, was it Michael who bought the, the Axminster Chuck for $120 US? Uh, if you could post where you got it, I think a lot of people would appreciate that. Oh, and Ian, of course, spells coloring wrong. They have too many U's over there in the U, okay. <laughs> may the may the fourth, may the fourth and B's be with all of you. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to say goodbye and I hope to see all of you at the next one. Thanks for sharing this with me. It was a lot of fun.